The general joint functor theorem is one of the three or four main results in category theory. It provides us a easy way to verify that a functor G is an adjoint. The characterization of a joint, which is most useful for us in this section, is that G is an adjoint if and only if for each object X in the codomain category, the undercategory X over G has an initial object. And that initial object is given by the unit of the adjoint situation, which is usually written eta X. And that just means that given any other arrow X to G Y F say, there exists this unique factorization through a to x. So we can then rephrase the question of when does a functor have an adjoint to when does a category C have an initial object. If we assume the further condition that the category C is complete, the solution has an easier answer. So the main lemma that we use in this section is the following. A complete category C has an initial object if and only if it has a weak initial object. And a weak initial object is the same as an initial object except that we don't require uniqueness. The definition is that P in C is a weak initial object if and only if for each object Y in C there exists a morphism P to Y. And that morphism does not need to be unique. So let's prove this. In the forward direction, this is just a fortiori the initial object is a weak initial object. Conversely, we need to construct some candidate initial object. So if we're given this weak initial object P, we're going to construct a sub-object of it, which will be our initial object. Since our category is a complete category, what we're going to do is take an equalizer. So we set Z equal to the equalizer of delta and bracket D where these two morphisms have domain P and codomain of a product of P indexed by the endomorphisms from P to P. And that morphism delta is given by the universal property such that the post composition by the dth projection gives us the identity. So it's like a diagonal. And the bottom morphism is going to be given by the universal property through the product such that the the post composition by the, the dth projection gives us the morphism D. The idea is that we're trying to get rid of extra morphisms that exist between the initial object. So first note that Z is still a weak initial object and that's because if we're given some object Y in C there exists this morphism from P to Y since P is weak initial and then we can precompose by H to give us a morphism from Z to Y. So all we need to show now is that if we're given two morphisms F and G from Z to some object Y then necessarily F is equal to G and that will give us a universal property which is the definition of an initial object. So let's assume that we have two morphisms F and G from Z to Y. If we take the equalizer and it turns out that F and G are in fact equal to each other, then the equalizer must be an isomorphism. That's just, that just follows from the universal property of limits. So our goal is to show that K is an isomorphism. So suppose that we take this equalizer since P is a weak initial object, there exists this morphism S from P to the equalizer. And then we also have that Z is a subobject of P, and we have this monomorphism H that we constructed above. And so by composition, we have this endomorphism from P to P given by composition HKS. And then by definition of Z, we must have HKSH is equal to H, and that follows by just replacing D in the diagram above by HKS. And so we see that H followed by HKS must be equal to H followed by the identity, or H. Therefore, since H is a monomorphism, it was given by a equalizer, and all equalizers are monomorphisms we have a left cancellative property, and so we take H off from the left, and we have KSH is equal to the identity on Z, and we're halfway to showing that K is isomorphism. What we do next is we precompose by K on both sides of this equation, and we have HKSHK is equal to K, and again, since K was given by a equalizing diagram, it's a monomorphism, and so it's left cancellative, and therefore, SHK is equal to the identity on the equalizer, which we may call 
E, say. And so we see that SH is in fact a left and right inverse to K, showing that K is ISO, and therefore, like we said, F must be equal to G. Note that we could have replaced the phrase weak initial object in the statement of the lemma above by a set of objects xi indexed by some set i of c such that for all objects y there exists this index i and a morphism from xi to y. And that's because since c was assumed to be complete it has products. We take the product of these objects xi then by precomposition by projections we see that the product of these xi's is a weak initial object. And this is going to connect us from the lemma to the proof of the general adjoint functor theorem. Recall that we're really looking at the category of x over g and not c, and so we should translate the idea of a set of objects in c to a set of morphisms, and that's what we'll do. This gives us a definition of a solution set criteria. So the definition, a functor g satisfies a solution set criteria, SSC, if and only if for each e object x there exists a set of e morphisms fi from x to gyi indexed by set i such that for each morphism h from x to gz there exists a factorization through some gyi. And if we assume that g is continuous then we also have that for each x in e the undercategory x over g has a weak initial object. So now we come to the main theorem, which we label as a proposition, but it's a theorem. So let A be a complete category, then the functor G is a joint, if and only if G is continuous and satisfies a solution set criterion. To prove the forward direction, we note that adjoints are continuous, and for each object X in E, the singleton set consisting of the unit. Um, a to x is a solution set, and that's just because it's the initial object in that undercategory x over g. Conversely, if we're given a solution set for x, fi, from x to g, y, i, indexed by some set i, then the product in this undercategory x over g, given by this object x to the product of g, y, i, is a weak initial object in x over g. And then since G is continuous and A is complete, we can show that X over G is also complete. And we leave that as an exercise for you to show. And then by the lemma, we have that X over G has an initial object. And that, as we said before, is the same as saying that G is a joint, since we have taken X arbitrarily. And this proposition, this theorem, is known as the General Adjoint Functor Theorem, or GAFT.